Live from Las Vegas, Nevada, extracting the signal from the noise. It's the Cube covering Informatica World 2015. Brought to you by Informatica World. Now, here's John Furrier and Jeff Frick. Okay, welcome back everyone. We are live here at Informatica World 2015. This is the Cube, our flagship program. We go out to the events and extract the signal from the noise. Our next guest is a customer, Humana. We have Fani Kundru, IT leader, consumer engagement, enterprise data and analytics, and Doug Scobie, principal architect, enterprise data analytics. Guys, welcome to theCUBE. Thank you. Thank you. So, um, healthcare, you guys doing some pretty awesome work. Customers of Informatica. What do you think of the show so far? Great, it's been really, it's been a great day. Lots of good information. What's the coolest thing you've seen so far? I think the, in terms of the number of people, engaging with uh, the different data integration capabilities across the different industries and the advancements that we're seeing, especially with big data and things like that, that's been pretty, pretty so cool. So tell them about your app, I mean, your story, because I, we were talking before we came on about the, the application. Using data, consumer engagement data in healthcare, you're like, wait a minute, is that when I go in, check in, I got you know, HIPAA, no one's got the data, no one has the right charts, it's all a big problem, and that's the perception of, of the medical field that is being broken down by the, some of the disruptors now. So, totally. you know, talk about the, the dynamic of now I'm out in the wild, living my life, yeah. Fitbit, on exercise, I might have a Internet of Things device on my, my body or, or, or any sensor of that nature. What's yeah. the future for you guys? What do you see that? So you hit it right on in terms of the current state of the soul industry and the domain is very uh, you know, broken and complicated and complex, right? So you have situations where you know, the experience is so troublesome and so frustrating as uh, individual consumers, you go into a doctor's office or if you want to share some data, it is like all of this is very hard and you go from one place to another place or you make a phone call, the pre previous person doesn't have any information now. So that's where data plays a critical role with all these changes that are going on. There's a dynamic that's happening where the consumer with the technology advancements is really demanding a lot of the change that's going on. And it's really helpful because the incentives are all getting aligned in the healthcare value chain, so that all the players are incented now to share the data. So that's where the data becomes a key part for us. We see the data moving from when, you, when a person goes to a doctor's office, that data is made available to the, the next you know, place where if they're going back to their home and you know, using devices that yeah. you mentioned like Fitbit, how does that data then get shared with maybe their healthcare payer who is also incenting them to manage their health and keep in good health, right? So all of this data connectivity is really the one that's really making it very compelling to my improve the experience. My rates would go like, way the hell up. Yeah. You know, he had too many drinks last night. No, I mean, but in all serious, this is a consumer issue, right? So go back sure. to the consumer mindset. It's like the consumer behavior with medical, like, ah, not a lot of engagement. But with the web, yep. people were self-serving, yep. using Google searches, getting on the web pages. I mean, granted, after all the spam gets out there and all the keyword stuffing, but for the most part, people were, are actually looking for data. That's Passive true. acquisition. Yeah. Now, this active, data is interesting. So can you share any insights around the consumer reaction to having an active engagement piece of it versus a passive research? You know, so we'll, share, we'll use the example of Fitbit devices, as popular as they are. So Humana has a, a, a rewards program called Humana Vitality, right? And part of that program is we engage partners, whether it's Fitbit or whether it's Weight Watchers, depending on individuals as they want. As they manage their conditions, they set their own goals and they can, as they reach certain goals, the program really rewards them for good behavior. And along the way, it also nudges them where there are moments of influence as they are going closer to the goal, so there are positive nudges, or as they are going, you know, staying back and d d retracting back towards bad habits and bad behaviors, there are some other pushes that we basically, the program really enables. So that's that's been the exciting Game part. mechanics built into that, like award systems, notches Absolutely. and the belt kind of thing. Exactly, right, there are, you know, you know, gaming theory is something being used, and there's a lot of behavioral economics theories being implemented to say when does rewards play a role versus when does penalties play a role, right? So those dynamics are we seeing yeah. as we implement It's interesting, because you have to have, you know, the technical chops to pull it off, and then kind of like the psychology behind it, 
um, interesting. It really is, and, and this is the most complicated part of it. Unlike in other industries where you may deal with behavior which is not on a continuous basis, healthcare is very personal. It's a date every day you live yeah. with it, right? Especially in the day and age that we are in, with significant number of chronic conditions that people are having and are expecting to develop. So that's where I think the significant shift towards people themselves taking care of their health, and with the proliferation of devices and the mobility that mobile capabilities that have enabled that. It's really a fascinating, exciting time. Doug, talk about the architectural side of it because you know it sounds great. I mean, I'm, I'm all for it. Mm -hmm. Who stores the data? Where's the governance? Privacy. Yeah. I mean, it can be an architectural nightmare if not architected properly. So, what's your take on that? How yeah. do you look at that as a clean sheet of paper? Is there some legacy? It seems like a clean sheet of paper on one side, but then well, on the other side, you got legacy. Yeah. So, I, one of the big challenges, I guess, is is a uh, combining these new sets of data, these new sources of data from external things with all our internal data where we, you know, we have structured transactional data, medical data, claims data, product data, all that kind of stuff. How do we bring some of these new sources of data that come in at various speeds? Uh, how do we bring that together with our internal structured data to build a better context about what we know about that member, what we know about they're going through? So, you know, architecturally we had to kind of expand our capability to address, you know, these new sources of big data. So we needed new solutions in terms of how do we initially ingest that data, how do we initially, uh, where do we initially put it, how do we process it and refine it to get it in a place where we can make use of it for different needs, whether they're operational needs or analytical needs or all those kind of things. Or just for, you know, from a design standpoint, like master data probably right. is something you must Connecting. have to take an approach on, right? Sure. Because you got unstructured data, but at least you know who the person is because they yeah. have some device on, right? That's true, and I think yeah. the master data management itself is really becoming very ex extended, if you will, because now you're not looking at just an individual as a person, you have to uh, do a quantify itself, and the identity of the person has to be tied to the devices that they're using. So it's really becoming fascinating from that perspective. I was talking to Bill Burns earlier this morning, and he's the security guy, and it's like, we actually, we mentioned Fitbit, and we're like, yeah, I mean, it's not a lot of, there's no real interface on a Fitbit, yeah. right? It's, sure. not, you know, it's not like you're going to be playing around with it, configuring and making settings. So mm -hmm. you do have some registration data in the sense that you know who the person is, but it's throwing off a ton of data to you guys. Now it's unstructured, and you're managing it. So that's what you mean by having that new data, mm -hmm. and then you cross-connect it over to the legacy. Sure. And using Informatica for that? Uh, yeah, so we have, Humana has different mobile apps that let us connect to, so a Fitbit device can be registered and say, I'm a Vitality member, I use Fitbit, send my Fitbit data over. That flows in, but then we do have the challenge of connecting that device for that person who signed into that Vitality app to our other Humana data that's based on member keys yeah. that might be parts of claims and that kind of thing. So we're not using Informatica in terms of our, our core MDM capability, but it's definitely the tool that's letting us integrate all those other sources and connect them to that mastered entity Got that it. we have in one system. Got so. it. And how do you guys deal with the, on the app? That's a good point about the app, because one of the benefits of having a, a native mobile app is you have to take advantage of the characteristics of the device. Yeah whether it's a companion device to the iWatch or a Fitbit or whatnot. Do you guys do that? Do you take advantage of some of the, the, the phone itself? And if the phone's moving, it's always moving as well, but sometimes they have multiple devices. How do you solve that problem? Just thinking out loud what yeah. the problem could be. That's a big part of our digital strategy, right? You may need to make sure that experiences are tailored to the devices that really people are using, right? So that's where the data part portion stays constant, right? You can make sure that the data is really you connecting to the APIs, and the APIs are tailored specifically to the devices over there. So that really enables us to make sure that we are enabling the analytics that we are doing on the data and make it available via APIs. And then there is a user experience is designed per the device that we're using. So you know, you talked about the phone, right? And we, we just before we were talking about the moments of influence, if you were, you're walking by a Starbucks and if you're part of the rewards program and you're close to your goal, we can give you a slight nudge and then say, hey, go ahead and have your favorite latte. Oh no, by the way. Do a few laps first. Exactly. <laughs> well, that one, or you can go ahead and choose, make sure a skinny latte and you'll get that other one because you can achieve your goal. That's contextual relevance. Now yeah. this is what we talked about earlier as well. In the moment, in the moment experiences is kind of the new, rage right now because right. you actually have the data, right? Correct. So like, mm -hmm. how do you now cross connect that in real time? That's the challenge most people have is, yes. okay, got the edge of the network, the right. user, yeah. I mean, I guess they're a user, internet of thing, whatever you want to call it. 
No, there you People are things, I guess, you know, people mm -hmm. and humans and machines. So I got this data here. What's the big challenge of getting that offer in? Is it low latency database access? Is it uh, the company having content? Uh, both? I mean, what's yeah, the challenge? That's a good question. I think part of it's the channel you want to deliver it in. So that's where having these different mobile apps does give us a conduit to send that notification. Um, you know, we do have partnerships with aggregators that help us get lots of different device data in so we don't have to focus on connecting to every device or every vendor and that kind of thing so we you know I think a lot of it's just establishing the connectivity uh, and having channels that will let you react and provide feedback back and there, there is a combination of that low latency and high concurrency capability right you need to design for that and make sure that you're supporting that part of it but even you break down any of the experience there is a component of that and that you push it more closer to the device and make sure then there is other portions yeah. of that that is does not that basically does not need that low latency over there right so those are the challenges that the complexity that you have to design into the application that you're making available at each device guys really appreciate you coming on and sharing your story love love the love the story congratulations yeah. Using the data and the consumer data to make people healthy. That's great stuff. Yeah. Thanks for joining us. We'll be right back. This is theCUBE live here at Informatica World. We'll be right back after this short break.